Brothers and sisters, gather round, for AMD may have delivered unto us a blessed miracle in these dark times of outrageous memory prices. But before I get to that, Intel's working on a monster GPU for real competition. The first next-gen Intel CPU gets benchmarked, and AMD's fastest gaming CPU is looking awesome. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Intel is apparently working on a monster GPU that could finally bring some real competition to the market. I'm talking a 300 watt beast of a cart. Now, before I get to specs and performance, this story originally comes from a shipping manifest where you can see that we have a number right here and a 300 watt GPU. Now. That code name apparently matches an earlier Intel GPU, specifically one used with the ARC B580 limited edition PCB. But of course, 300 watts is way more than any GPU Intel's offering right now. And this perfectly aligns with recent rumors about a higher end ARC B770 card, including a Linux driver update that lists new Battle Mage PCI IDs, as well as leaks from Computex briefings and partner channels claim a late 2025 release. So this is just further proof that Intel's cooking up a very nice cart. As far as specs, leaks claim we're looking at a GPU with 32 XE2 cores and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory across a 256-bit bus. That's obviously a big step up from Intel's ARC B580. When it comes to performance, leaks put it around NVIDIA's RTX 4070, meaning a serious competitor to mid-range GPUs. Maybe even getting somewhat close to AMD's RX 9000 cards. But of course, the question will really boil down to price. Luckily, if you're looking to save money on your GPU, there's no better place than today's sponsor, Jawa. The online marketplace that was built for gamers by gamers, which means they actually know about all the scams going on right now with GPUs, and they guarantee that you get exactly what's listed or your money back. So there's no need to worry about that. But the big thing is that you can find awesome deals on all your favorite PC hardware, which includes GPUs, CPUs, motherboards, even peripherals. I mean, check out this 13,900K for just $290, or this Ryzen 9600X for just $189.95. And if you're strapped for cash, you can trade in your old GPU or CPU to put towards your new build. Now, if you're not really big into building out your own rig, don't worry there either, because Jawa offers a ton of pre-built PCs from artisan builders at every price point, so they can range from a very nice budget build all the way up to a gaming beast. So if you're sick of overpaying for your PC hardware, check out Jawa down in the description below. No. Next up for today, we have our first benchmark for Intel's next-gen CPUs, specifically their Core Ultra 7 270K+. Don't forget that this is a refreshed Arrow Lake part. Intel's planning to launch these before their real next-gen upgrade, Nova Lake. So don't expect massive gains or anything like that, but some parts do actually get more cores. So it won't be as bad as you may think. Either way, as you can see, this is a Geekbench benchmark of the 270K+, and it comes with four extra cores over the current gen 265K. We're talking eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores, which is exactly what the earlier leaks suggested. So once again, the leaks were spot on. Now, it's showing a maximum frequency of 5400 megahertz or 5.4 gigahertz, but leaks have shown the final product would come with 5.5 gigahertz. And I would be surprised if Intel lowered the frequency from last gen to this gen, even with more cores. So I'd assume this is just an earlier sample or it's just not reading it right. With that said, while it comes with extremely low memory speed at just 4800 mega transfers per second, it still beats out the 265K. As you can see, see it scores 3,235 single core and for multi-core it gets 21,368. Now that's only 5.5% faster in single and 3.6% faster in multi-threading versus the 265K. But once again, its memory speed is a major issue. The fact that it could beat it out with that at all is pretty impressive. Overall, while next gen won't be a giant upgrade, I think it'll be good enough for those coming from older hardware.
And next up, we're getting more and more info about AMD's future gaming CPU, the 9850X3D, which is said to be the fastest gaming CPU ever. I'm talking I have a new benchmark on it, as well as some other stuff. So before I get to the benchmark, the CPU was recently spotted on a computer. As you can see, it's running in a Zeus BIOS on the B850M AYW Gaming OC. And there you have it, the Ryzen 7 9850X3D. And yes, it is an eight core processor. And that's already pretty awesome because it proves that Amy is getting very close to launching this bad boy. But it's also shown running at 9800, well, that says megahertz, but I would assume mega transfers per second, which would be wildly high for Ryzen CPUs. Now, with that said, it's still in BIOS, so it doesn't really tell us the actual stability or anything. But if this is true, it's really impressive, though I do want to point out the absurd 2037 date. Not sure if they just changed the date to be funny or if it's just early BIOS wonkiness, but do take this part with a grain of salt. Either way, like I said, we also have a new benchmark. You can see that it's a Passmark benchmark and we have the 9850X3D versus the regular 9800X3D. And of course, once again, we're looking at eight cores and 16 threads threads and upwards of 5.6 gigahertz. And when it comes to the score, it beat it by 4.5%. And obviously that's not a huge upgrade over the 9800X3D, but it's getting much closer to that, or I would say probably around five to 8% faster. At least that's just an estimate from me, what I'm expecting given the clock speed and things like that. Either way, once again, that's still fairly impressive given this is not a new generation or anything, and it's already going against the fastest gaming CPU out there. And lastly for today, AMD's helping out gamers as the price of memory continues to skyrocket. Now, before I get to this story, I've seen some comments on articles that are about this, wondering how this has anything to do with memory prices. It does, and I'll explain that, but I'm gonna go over the story first. So let me get to that and then the explanation before you start typing away. So the headline of the story is, AMD reportedly postpones B650 chipset discontinuation amid DDR5 price spike. This originally comes from the Board Channels forum, which is of course where a lot of board partners go to discuss things. It isn't just board partners, but a lot of very accurate leaks definitely come from this. Either way, you can see that they claim that AMD has confirmed that the B650 chipset will not be discontinued and that motherboard manufacturers will continue to purchase it. He goes on to cite the significant increase in memory prices and the resulting impacts on demand. So essentially, AMD is reversing an earlier decision that they would end production of the B650 chipset this year. It was actually supposed to happen in October, but it didn't. And according to this, AMD won't be doing that anytime soon. Now, a lot of people are wondering how this helps with DDR5 prices, given the B650 still uses DDR5. Well, the simple fact is that B650 boards are cheaper. So as people price together their build, they're having to put more of their budget towards memory. So they have to save in other ways. As you can see, going from an MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, we're looking at 129, to 169, so a $40 difference. Then going from an Asus B650 Max Gaming, $139.99 to $159.99. So not that big of a difference, $20 more. Apparently we're looking at between $30 to $60 savings to as much as $100. Meaning if AMD got rid of these B650 boards, gamers would be forced to buy the more expensive part. Not only that, but according to this, major motherboard manufacturers are adjusting their purchasing and production plans. And factories may increase purchases of B650 chipsets and initiate additional contract manufacturing capacity. This is great because it could mean that B650 boards get even cheaper. Now, 
don't get me wrong, AMD isn't doing this out of the kindness of their heart. According to video cards, motherboard sales in November are said to be down by about half compared to the same month last year, with similar weakness expected in December. So this is purely a response to the drop in demand, which is of course the beauty of markets. As people quit buying, they have to do something to bring those customers back. Now, in this case, unfortunately, AI is bringing a ton of the demand. It's because of that that these prices are up to begin with, but motherboard vendors still want to keep their customers. So they, along with AMD, are trying to keep costs down as much as they can to help with the insane memory prices.